Everyone, this is three questions with Vernon Wright. Bernie, you need one of these soundboards. They're like the, the best thing ever. I got the I got the applause. I got all this stuff, man. It's pretty awesome. So Bernie and I were just having an awesome talk before the podcast. It's one of my favorite things about doing this is um, the off the wax stuff that we just, you know, sit and chat with people. Uh, something I really appreciate during this time. But lots of lots of amazing things that you do. And I know that you've been an educator for a long time and I like one of the questions I love asking is like, who you, you've inspired so many people. Uh, I know that every interaction they have with you on social media is totally uplifting. So like when you were a kid, who's a teacher and maybe not a kid, maybe a uh, university, maybe as a colleague, like who's a teacher that inspired you and why? Yeah, great question. And I just want to say uh, before we get really deep into it, man, what an honor to be with you all. Um, one of the, the most absolute privileges in my life to be on the space with you and to talk with you, man. And uh, I love your authenticity. And I know that your listeners have that authenticity too. So who's the teacher, right? Who's the teacher? This, this is going to be a little bit different. Most people expect the K, to, the K through 12 flow, right? But I'm going to hit them with that undergrad. So some folks may not necessarily know about me, but my undergrad is a bachelor's of business administration and economics and finance, master's in leadership. And i um, I had an undergrad professor. He has passed, unfortunately, but his name was Lewis Raymond McLean III, and he was a CFA. And uh, for those that are familiar with that, that is in the financial world, a chartered financial analyst. And um, one of the things that he really taught me about was this whole process of being an educator, but also being in the business world. And I never really thought that those two things could be the same. I always thought, okay, well, you have business over here and you have education over here. How can those two things be together? I had always thought that they were mutually exclusive. And he just had this flow about him where he lived out this whole education thing. And he was always a person that was authentic. And he was a person that you could approach. And I'll say this real quick. When I interviewed for my first leadership position out of grad school, I remember them asking me during the um, interview, right? Because it was an interview panel of other administrators. And they said, hey, Vernon, um, what are three adjectives that you would use to describe yourself? And I said, real, competent, and caring. Real, I always wanted people to know that I was authentic, competent. I wanted people to know that I knew some things. I don't know everything, right? I'm very proud to be a lifelong learner and caring so that at the end of the day that I knew that, you know what, no matter what happens, it's about people. And so um, he was really the impetus and the genesis for so many different things that I've done in my life. Yeah, and you, th you think about that, and I, I'm curious of your thoughts about, I, I've been really kind of focusing on this quite a bit, and when we're recording this, uh, it's all uh, the cryptocurrency with Bitcoin, Dogecoin, um, all those things, AMC, uh, game, game, uh, GameStop. GameStop, yeah. Yeah, All GME, talks, for like those that are huge symbol followers. Yeah, and it's a huge conversation. Yeah. And I think that, like, I'm curious if kids understand what's going on or we're teaching this in school and having those conversations because these are actually kind of important concepts, to, you know, to kind of help, you know, kids and, and things like that. And one of the knocks on education that you often hear is that we don't teach financial literacy, or we don't even teach that well, it's very specialized, maybe specific classes. And I'm not saying that's um, true. But it is a it is a, um, a kind of a something you hear about education. So like, what do you think about that experience that you had with a teacher? And like, how does it apply to what we're doing right now? Yeah, so two things. One from uh, the great Dave Burgess, who says, read wide and live wide. Mm -hmm. The second one from this guy, I don't know if you know him or not, but his name's George Kuros. <laughs> and he talked about... Uh, I know the... him, but it's embarrassing to know him. <laughs> All right. And he talks about really the different aspects of the 21st century learner. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I always ask educators about is this, because educators typically say what? What do we say? We're getting kids ready for the real world, right? Mm -hmm. But when we look at what we want 21st century learners to have in terms of skills, are we really thinking about the context of the environments and spaces that they're going to live in as, as citizens? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Are we really thinking about that? And one of the things is really this whole piece around financial literacy. And it's great for kids to know, you know, what is a checking account? What's a saving savings account? Right. What's a debit card? What's a credit card? But you have to understand really the lay of the land and to know that, you know what, there are things happening in this world that we have to speak to. I'll give you an example with the crypto. Uh, I myself, I am a currency trader, so I cur- I trade uh, to some extent Bitcoin, but I also trade currencies as well. For those of you that are into forex trading, go ahead and hit me up on IG, Instagram, at sign the right leader, and we can talk about getting on the charts and looking at that kind of stuff. But um, there are enter- entertainers and athletes now, pro athletes, and guess what they're getting paid in? Part of their remuneration is in crypto. And there are places now, of course, we all saw this during 2020, where they would have signs when you would go into those retail stores. We don't have a lot of cash on hand. If you have cash, please see if you can have the correct change. So what we're seeing now is we're seeing this push to the digital era. But I'm going to be honest with you, George. How many spaces have I been in uh, over time, uh, whether that's in person or virtually, where I've heard other educators talking about before this all happened with GameStop and, and uh, AMC uh, with the short selling and all of that. How many of our, how many of them have I heard say anything about Bitcoin? Now I've posted stuff about Bitcoin on my IG feed, but I haven't had a lot of people say, Hey, Vernon, talk to me about Bitcoin. You know, you know it's, it's interesting. And I don't want to take, cause we've got two more questions to, to get to, but <laughs> there's something you said that, kind of gave me a little bit of light bulb because we talk about real world getting kids prepared for the real world when when i was a kid and i i just this is the light bulb the stuff my parents talked about had access to i didn't really have access to right like you know it's like we had like two totally different worlds kids now have access to information that every adult has access to and really thinking about they like, you know, the whole kids these days, blah, blah, blah. You hear that all the time. You've heard it. And I, I, whatever it's, it's a gener like every generation says that about, you know, the current generation of kids, but it is true that these kids have access to basically, well, to everything that we have access to. And so kind of like, they're going to be talking about this stuff. Have not, so it's just something that made me think anyways, to jump to the next question. Cause we're, we got a long podcast that's coming up too with, with Vernon. It's going to be awesome. So, uh, you go by the right leader, right? It's a big thing. So obviously leadership is really important to you. And sometimes like I, I, I'm very cognizant when I talk about leaders and I talk about administrators, I don't meet like, it's, I don't use those words interchangeably, right? I know a lot of administrators who are not leaders. I know a lot of teachers who are incredible leaders. And so when you think about administrators specifically, okay, I'm sure you're going to point to a leader when you look at your career, whether it's a student, uh, uh, you know, being in the education system, who's an administrator that really inspired you and why? Yeah. So two people, right. And I'm going to name one, the three, actually, I'm praying I'm breaking show rules, but real quick, one in person, his name is Brian Lusk. Uh, and uh, he is chief of staff for a school district down here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, deputy chief of staff. Uh, phenomenal guy, um, meant so much to me. I, I could never, ever repay him for all of the things that he did for me uh, when I was coming up many, many moons ago, right? Before I had a little bit of gray in my beard and I had to start coloring it. <laughs> the second is uh, a guy by the name of, if you're on social media, particularly IG, at sign the 808 trader. And he is one of my mentors that is in business and in currency trading and investing, and he has been so meaningful to me. And the third person is someone that I have never met in my life, but they've been a phenomenal influence. And they speak directly to the whole thing around administrators and leaders versus those that are what I call true leaders. And some of you may be familiar with his work, and that is the great John C. Maxwell. And when he talks about leadership, he defines in short, right? I'm, I'm obviously oversimplifying due to time constraints that real leaders have influence. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have influence, you're really nothing but a title or what he calls level one leadership in his book, which I highly recommend the five levels of leadership. I think that should be required reading for any leader before they get into any position 
beyond being a leader of self and being a leader of others, even at the teacher leader level. Yeah. And that, that is leadership is like, you have the power to like influence people to move forward. Right. And, and it doesn't mean just in like a principal role it could be, I've seen some of the best leaders I've seen are in the classroom. So I, I love that concept. When I talk to you, when people are listening, right, it's so fascinating to me how many different areas that you jump into, right? Like you have tons of training and education. You, you inspire people. I see you doing uh, stuff with like working out all the time. <laughs> uh, you do stuff with, you know, financial business aspect. Yeah. And so I know you're an incredible learner. And so if you, and learning is part of growth, right? When you look back at your um, education career, I'm sure there's things that if you look back on your first year, that you'd be like, I can't believe I used to do that. There's got to be something, right? So like, if you can go back and talk to yourself in your first year of teaching, like what advice would you give yourself? Two things real quick, actually three. And if you're taking notes, which you know, you do not come to a George Kuros <laughs> podcast, ladies and gentlemen, without being ready to take notes, right? Number one is know thyself. I had to know who I was, know my talents and gifts. And I had a mentor do this for me uh, about 25, 30 years ago. And it was a phenomenal thing. Take this down, folks. If you got to replay it, replay it. Number one, he said this, Vernon, he said, get a blank sheet of paper and write down every talent and gift that you have and keep writing until you stop. Right? That's number one. Know thyself, write down your talents and gifts. Second thing, have a vision for what you want to do with those talents and gifts. He told me, he said, those talents and gifts are not just for you to enjoy. They're for you to use to be a blessing and to uplift other people. And number three, become a person of action. And I was on a podcast with uh, Scott Nunes, Jake Miller, Tish Richmond, and my good friend, Tara Martin. Uh, and one of the things that we talked about for 2021 was commitment. And I said this, I said, there are three levels, right? And I went through the three levels. Those of you that are watching and listening, you may say, Vernon, well, have I gone through the three levels? Well, let me go ahead and tell you what the three levels are. At one point in my life as a first year teacher, yeah, I was interested, Right. And then I said, you know what, maybe I'm beyond interested and maybe I'm committed. And then I became kind of committed and, and, and you know, my, my buy-in was a little deeper, right? But I have to tell you this, this is where the juice is. And of course, those that kind of know that slang vernacular, juice means the power. This is where the juice has been in my life. When I became not committed, but I became beast mode committed. And when I became beast mode committed, that's when it was lights out. And I was like, you know what? I am so fully persuaded in what I am doing. There is nothing anyone can do to dissuade me or pull me off of what this vision is. And when that's, when I became sold on myself, that's when doors started to open in my life. I love it. I'm, you know what? Like if, if anyone's listening and you're not pumped up right now, I don't know what I can do for you. So Vernon, thank you so much for that. And, uh, you know, think about that. I'm going to, you know, write a list, uh, of all my strengths. So, you know, give me 10 seconds and, jump in. but man, it's no, going to be a little bit longer than 10 seconds, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I'm a slow writer. So the, so Vernon, awesome. That was incredible. So everyone, uh, thanks for listening. Vernon, thanks for coming to three questions. Awesome. man.